the web address ending dot AI stands for Angular. And Angola, as everyone knows, is an island in the Caribbean and a former British colony. But how did another tiny island by name Tokelau end up as the country with the second highest number of website registrations in the world? Let's have a look. The endings of web addresses like .com, .org, .us and so on are known as top-level domains. They are managed by many different institutions known as the registry of the domain. We usually don't pay all that much attention to top-level domains, but they contain a lot of information. The most common top-level domain is .com. These are managed by the company called VeriSign, which sits in Virginia in the United States. If you register a domain, you don't directly do this with the registry. You do it through a third party known as a registrar. That's usually your internet provider like GoDaddy or Strato or something like that. They make the registration on your behalf. So you, the registrant, pay something to the registry and a little extra to the registrar. All these registries are assigned and overseen by ICANN, that's the Internet Corporation for Assigned Numbers and Names. VeriSign, which manages .com, also oversees .net, .gov and .edu. The latter two, .gov and .edu, however, you can only request as a governmental institution in the US or as an educational institution, respectively. Some other countries also have top-level domains reserved for the government. For example, .gov.uk is the official domain of the British government. What I didn't know until last week is that all two-letter domains are country domains. Each of these country domains is managed by a designated institution within the respective country. For example, .uk is managed by Nominet in the United States. .us is managed by the American Registry for Internet Numbers. .de is managed by DENIC in Germany and so on. The interesting thing is that many people, like me, don't know that two-letter top-level domains are all country domains. This fact is so little known that some top-level domains have become popular in certain business sectors, like Angulas.ai for AI startups or Italy's.it for anyone to do with information technology. In the broadcast and podcast business, the endings .am and .fm have spread, referring to the common abbreviations for amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. You may know that this from riverside.fm. But what does it stand for? FM are the Federated States of Micronesia, that's more islands, and .am, that's Armenia. Cape Verde has become popular to put up a CV. The island of Tuvalu attracts anyone to do with TV and the Republic of Djibouti is the go-to for DJs. Who can buy a top-level domain in any specific country depends on the registrar who's tasked with overseeing them. This has had some funny consequences. If you look at the list of most widely used country code top-level domains by last year, then on the very top of the list there is CN, which is China. That that makes sense, because after all, China is a big country. But what the heck is TK? TK stands for Tokelau. Tokelau is, you guessed it, another island, this one in the South Pacific Ocean, north of New Zealand. Tokelau has a population of about 1,500 inhabitants. When country code top-level domains became available in 1997, no one in Tokelau had any idea what to do with them. They gave the rights to a Dutch company by name Freenum, which also manages a few other companies country code domains. Freenum sold the .tk domains for free, presumably making money with related services such as also selling off the .com domain or asking for money after some period had passed. They didn't exactly ask for a lot of information about whoever was registering the domain. This made .tk domains very popular among those who move their websites frequently. And this is how the tiny island of Tokelau became infamous as the to-go place for fishers, scammers and anyone doing illegal deals. Freenum was technically obliged to remove domains that had been reported to violate laws within a certain period of time, but all too often they didn't. Early last year, Meta sued them for it. In November 2023, ICANN terminated its accreditation agreement with Freenum. On February 12th this year, Freenum announced that it had settled the lawsuit with Meta under undisclosed terms and that it had exited the domain name and registry business. And I am now very tempted to register a website in St. Helena. 
I used to get a lot of spam calls on my cell phone. This has basically stopped since I got a new phone number, but I really don't want the new number to leak out again. This is why I've signed up to Incogni, who've been sponsoring this video. You see, each time you open a website, it'll try to collect data about who you are and where you are and what other websites you've visited. If you then sign up for a website and fill in your personal details, they can and often do make money by selling your private information to data brokers. Most countries have laws against that and you can ask for your data to be removed, but doing this takes up a lot of time. Incogni automates the process of getting you out of those databases. You sign up and they'll contact the big sinners requesting that your personal details be removed. They'll keep on doing that and if you want, send you updates about the progress they're making. I'm glad there's now a simple solution to stop unfriendly people doing nasty things with my personal details. Incogni is super easy to use. You sign up, give them the information they should look for and they go to work, like within a minute basically. I now sleep better at night and maybe I can help you sleep better too. If you use our code Zabina or the custom link in the info below, you'll get 60% off of Incogni. That's an amazing deal, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.